PPO is about predicting the range. And if you guys remember, we started off by um, finding the initial velocity, and we use this video right here. And so we basically shared this video or this data file from this video with graphical. And then from graphical, we went to Microsoft Excel. So of course we converted and we edited and we saved all of this stuff. And so we actually figured out what our what our initial velocity was. And we're going to start right here. And I am just going to extend this, but we want to move into predicting the range. So we're going to create ourselves a new sheet. So the first part is going to be um, verifying, writing in and verifying our equation. Okay, that'll be this first video. I'm going to go ahead and type in initial velocity. Okay, and that's going to be in meters per second. So we kind of know that already, but let's just bring it in. Mm -hmm. So that's meters per second, and then the, so let's go ahead and acquire that information. And we're going to acquire this from the previous page. So this is going to equal to, and we calculated our initial velocity right here. So I'm going to select that cell, and then I'm going to check off or hit return. So it brings that information right into this cell right here. So the next one is going to be angle, our angle in degrees. Angle in degrees. Okay. And so the angle is zero degrees, if you remember. That's how we calculated our initial velocity. So we're just going to put in a zero there. But Excel doesn't like angle in degrees, it wants it in radians. So we're going to convert that over. Angle in radians. So the way we convert that over is we multiply pi times the angle in degrees and divide it by 180 degrees. There are pi radians in 180 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and say equals to our angle times pi. I'm just going to go ahead and select that. Divide it by 180 degrees. So we have zero here. It's should be pretty clear that we would have zero there as well. So after the angle in radians, we want to, um, I feel like I need to go and talk to you guys about a little theory here. So if we just go back and we start looking at this equation, here we want to predict range. We want to predict range, so we need an, we need our initial velocity. We have that. We need our angle. We are, we'll have that. 
and now we need our time of flight. So the way we're going to calculate our time of flight is with this equation right here. And this equation is based on A, B, and C. A is just a negative 4.905. B is based on the initial velocity and the angle. And so we have our initial velocity and our angle. And we have our height measurement, which is back on our original page. So we're going to put in A, B, and C. And then we're going to calculate for T. You see that there are two solutions for T, but we're going to go ahead and um, just do one, the one that works. So we have angle in radians, we have angle in degrees. This is going to be A. This one's going to be B. And the next cell is going to be C. And I don't want it to be a capital C. I just want it to be C. All right, so A, we know A is going to be equal to negative 4.905, and then B is going to be equal to, remember on this page, B is V naught sine theta. Okay, so V naught is back here, times sine of our angle, and our angle has to be in radians, so remember we want to select the angle in radians here. And it's just zero, so let me go ahead and grab that. And then we're going to hit return. So it is as we expected. V naught sine theta is our velocity, our initial velocity in the y direction. If we fire it in at, at an angle of zero degrees, all of the velocity is in the x direction. So this is an appropriate answer. And then c, we already know. c has been given to us. When I say c has been given to us, we have C on the other page here. It's on, it's on initial velocity, and C is right here. So let's go ahead and select that. And also, we need to make sure that this is the absolute value of this one. Actually, a negative sign in front of it would be appropriate. OK. That's what the math did, made it, a, made it a positive number. So we have A, B, and C here. Now we need to go back to our time equation. And our time equation is right here. We're going to have B, we have B, we have A, C, and A here. So we're about to put that into our equation. We're not going to use a positive sign. We're going to use a negative sign. Okay. Time of flight in seconds. All right, there we go. Time of flight in seconds. And so now this is just going to be and let's make sure we put it in right, that's going to be equal to um, time of flight, which is going to be the denominator. <clears throat> and let's, let's make sure that we put this in parenthetical statements. It's going to be a negative b. So remember, b is over here. It's a negative b minus the square root, sqrt, of b squared. Okay, b squared minus 4 times a. a is a negative 4.905 times c. I'm going to close that parenthetical statement there, and then we're going to close uh, for the square root, and then we're going to close the entire numerator. So now we're going to divide this by the denominator, which is just 2 times a. So we have 2 times a, and a is, again, a negative 4.905. So let's close that parenthetical statement. And... We're getting uh, a time of flight of point one two nine eight four one nine. So let's verify that. If we go back to our initial velocity, we'll see that we have a time of flight right here.
and it's very similar to this one. Let's go ahead and label this sheet. Let's call this predicting the range. Predicting the range. So we have a predicting the range. So we have our time of flight in this. And now we need to put in, once we have our time of flight, we can predict our range. So if we go back to this equation, you'll see that the range is xf minus x0. And it equals to the initial velocity, which we know, times cosine of the angle, which we know, times the time of flight. So we have everything here. So let's do that. Predicted range in meters. So that's not quite what I wanted, but it's close. So this is just going to be equal to the initial velocity, which we have way down here. So initial velocity, and I can make this a little bit smaller so we can see it all times the cosine of the angle in radians, which is here, times our time of flight, which is here. All right, so this is going to predict our range. And lo and behold, we have our prediction here is 0.39478. If we go back to our initial velocity, you'll see that our average range is right here. So we're going to verify this with our measured range in meters. Measured range in meters. So now that we have that, we just go back and reference that sale. And there it is. So I'm just going to hit the check mark. It's going to take me back. Now we want to compare these two, and in its comparison, we uh, are going to find the percent error. The percent error is going to be found like so. Let's see here. That's not it. The percent error is here. It is the predicted range minus the measured range over the measured range times 100%. Okay. So we're going to put that into Microsoft Excel. Percent error. So our percent error, again, is going to be equal to the absolute value, which is just A, B, S, grab our function, of the predicted range minus the measured range divided by the measured range times 100. So we're getting 0% error. I don't quite like this formatting, so what I'll do is I'll just take off this 100, bring it down, and I'm going to change this formatting by going home, selecting on general, and then going down to percentage you'll see that we have 0% error, which is what we should have, okay? But we wanted to verify that our equations were coming in. In the next video, we are going to go and um, extend this to 20 degrees.